you saw a pattern at the store but aren't quite sure where to start or what to make heads or tails out of this pattern. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to take you from the very beginning, looking at these sewing patterns and breaking it all down. To become familiar with patterns, I want to show you a variety of patterns. Grab your pattern that you have on hand, and even better, if you have several patterns or a couple of patterns, that would be great, so that you can kind of see the similarities between all patterns. Because the way my brain works, I don't know about yours, but if I can find commonalities between certain things that I'm trying to learn. It helps me kind of absorb and organize in my head what exactly it is that I'm trying to learn. So I'm gonna bring you in closer so that we can go over these patterns together. When you're going to the store to buy patterns that you have three things in mind. You wanna have an idea of the pattern that you're looking for. So whether it's a skirt, a top, you wanna make sure that you're going armed with your measurements with an idea of what type of fabrics. So starting with the front of the envelopes, you'll find that each of the envelopes has a particular number. Now these numbers are the particular identifier to that pattern. So when you're in the store, looking through the catalogs, you will see the pattern and the pattern number. And you'll want to jot this pattern number down so that when you go to the drawers to find your pattern in your particular size, you have it as a reference. So the pattern numbers sometimes have a letter in front of it. That letter is usually the manufacturer. So for instance, this is a C and sew pattern, but if you look closer, it is a Butterick pattern. So it's made by the Butterick company and so it has a B. You'll frequently see it. like the McCall's pattern will frequently have the M before the number. Let's focus in on the similarities that you'll find for each one of these patterns. So we've talked about the number and then there will be the manufacturer. The other thing that you'll see is the actual image of the pattern. And this is to just give you an idea of what it would look like. And you'll notice letters on most of the patterns. And this is just indicating that there are three different options or view for the skirt. Sometimes it is difficult to see what the difference is in the views from just looking at the front of the pattern. And that's when the line drawings on the back are particularly helpful because you can kind of see and the schematic a little bit closer what the particular details are. In this apron, there are two views. There's A, which is a shorter apron, and then B, the full apron. And when you flip it over, you'll see detailed diagram. These two are view A's. It's just showing you the front and the back view. And then B and C would be the top and underwear portion. And then the B and C is just showing you the back view of, of this particular undergarment. Same thing on the tote bag. You'll see that there are different views because there's some differentiations with the types of the pocket styles. You need to decide which view you are wanting to choose because it's going to impact how much fabric that you'll need to get as well as the notions that you'll need to get. Now the other thing that you'll find on the front of the pattern, sometimes you'll see the barcode and next to the barcode you will see that in this envelope it contains small, medium, and large. On this pattern it's on the side you'll see this particular envelope contains size 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. So it's really important that when you do go to the drawers to pick out your pattern envelope that you pay attention to these sizes because often they're broken down into the smaller range sizes or the larger sizes. Now for something like this tote bag, there are no particular sizes. It's just a one size. For the skirt, you can see that this says sizes are 10 through 18. Those are the common things that you'll find on the front of the pattern. Flipping all the patterns over, Oh my word, how scary is this? <laughs> if you're a beginner, I completely understand how terrifying this looks, but once you get used to it, you'll know exactly what all this fine print means. So <laughs> let's take a look. It can definitely be intimidating for sure. 
The good news is that most of the patterns, half of the information is usually in a different language, which most cases I've seen it's French. So you can kind of take that and not worry about that side. And so you're just looking at one half of the, the envelope. So it's not as intimidating as just glancing down and looking at all that fine print. But before we get there, let's take a look at the flap. Now the flap can contain several different things. Three of these patterns, the back part of the envelope gives you again the pattern number, the company, and it has the cost of the pattern. Okay, so the next thing that you will look for on your pattern is the pattern sizing. If you're making clothing apparel, you'll find different sizes on there and you'll want to make sure that you choose a pattern that is appropriate for your size. You'll frequently find the measurements on the flap, which is a convenient way to be able to figure out which size you need to be looking for. The basic measurements, now there may be some patterns that are more in depth than this, but I'm just gonna go over some general measurements. The first one you'll see is the bust measurement and the way you want to take your bust measurement is you want the tape measure to first of all be parallel to the ground so you don't want it sloping down and then measuring it this way and you want to go to the apex of your breast point so that means the tip or the nipple area and you will come across and take a measurement and write it down because you'll need this when you go to the store. The next measurement you'll commonly see is your waist measurement. To find your waist, you may have heard this or you may remember your grandmother telling you this, but to find your waist, you just do the little tea, teapot <laughs> movement and wherever you kind of feel that bend is where your waist measurement is. And generally it is around the smallest area. Again, just do this and I think mine is right there and you take a measurement there. Now for your hip measurement, I think you might be able to see if I stand on my tippy toes. But what you wanna do is again, in the same manner, for all these measurements, you wanna make sure that the, the tape is sitting level. In other words, you don't want it sagging, you don't want it going up, but you wanna make sure that it is parallel to the floor. You want the measuring tape to be sitting at your widest point. So wherever your little tushy is, <laughs> You want to make sure you find the widest point on your bottom and take a measurement there. Okay, so those are some basic measurements. Now there are so many more that if you're really getting into more complicated patterns that you will want to take. Now, depending on the manufacturer, these sizes can vary greatly. So if you are a size and ready to wear clothes, it may be completely different when you start looking at patterns. So when you go to shop for a pattern, if it is particularly for clothes, you want to make sure that you go armed with your measurement. So let's take a closer look to the McCall's pattern. On this one, it will have the body measurements and because you will have gone to the shop with your measurements, you'll know which of these sizes to look for. So for instance, if your bust measurement is 31 or 31 and a half inches, then you know that you'll fall in a size eight. Your waist, 24 and your hip is 33 and a half. Now for the finished garment measurement, this actually tells you what the clothing measurement is going to be once you've sewn it all together and it'll allow for ease. Ease being the amount of extra movement that the garment allows so that it is not completely too tight for you. Okay, so the next part that you will find on this back portion that you need to pay attention to is the line diagram. And we kind of mentioned that earlier, but the line diagram gives you a closer look at what you can expect out of the view that you're looking for. So the descriptions can be very brief or it can be more of a lengthy description. Or right, the next section on these patterns is the fabrics part. And this is super, super important because 
the fabric so it's going to tell you exactly what type of fabric is most appropriate for this pattern. You also want to consider if you're getting something that has a one directional print on it or if you're doing things like plaids or checks or stripes that you will want to get more fabric than is even recommended here because you're going to have to allow for matching those fabrics so it's always better to get a little extra now underneath the fabrics there is a section that is listed for your notions now this particular section may vary depending on which view you're going to do now when you get down to the sizing information, the si in the left hand column you'll see the letters that correspond to each of the views. So all of these, section, these sections are the sizing for view A. This would be for view B, how much fabric you need to get. Now this would be C and D. Now most fabric comes in 45 inch width or 60 inch width and this is important to know when you're going in to buy your fabric because it's going to tell you exactly how much fabric you need. And so if you have a narrower width of fabric, you're going to probably need a little bit more than say if you had the 60 inch width, width of fabric. The width of fabric is usually found on the end of the bolt. So if you have the bolt, it's usually on the sticker on the end of the bolt or it's usually on the label of the fabric. So if you're going for, let's say a size 10 and say it's a 45 width of fabric. So if you're doing size 10, you know that you're going to look over the 45 so you're going to need to purchase two yards and seven eighths for your fabric length. And this is gonna be important when you get to placing the pattern pieces on your fabric. Now, one thing that I don't have here is if a pattern calls for a stretchy fabric, sometimes it will have a measured diagram on the side. And it'll say, for instance, a four inch piece of fabric and it'll have where it should stretch to. So it's measuring the amount of stretch that is in that fabric. So if it is able to stretch to the designated point, then you know that that would be a suitable fabric to get. If it didn't stretch enough, then you know that that would not be the right fabric to choose. I hope that you found this video helpful. As usual, happy sewing. Mm -hmm.